you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Holy Name High School's annual spring musical. I just have a few announcements. As you know, there's no smoking within the building. There will be a 10-minute intermission. If anyone wishes to step outside in the rain and smoke, you may. Also, no pictures, please. We had many pictures taken on dress rehearsal, and I'm sure they've been passed around. Plus, the cast will be ready after the performance. There were two people that were admitted from the program, uh, one of our stage crew, Fred Biacci, and one from our orchestra, Jill Wynn. Before we start the performance, I would just like to say that the cast and crews would like to dedicate this performance to Jane Krakowiak. And now our maestro, Mr. John Cook, enjoy the show. Thank you. 
not receive, may the Lord make you truly thankful. Amen. It's nice to be appreciated, Mrs. Corney. These here poppers and this here parish don't appreciate me. Aren't I parochial they are, ma'am? Aren't I parochial? We have given away a mortar of twenty loaves and a cheese and a half this very blessed afternoon. And still, them poppers is not contented. Of course they're not. When would they be? Sweet, Mr. Bumble? Very sweet indeed, ma'am. You little tinker, you! You have a cat, ma'am, I see. And kittens, too, I declare. I'm so fond of them, you can't imagine, Mr. Bumble. And they're fond of their own, too. Mrs. Corny, ma'am, I must say that any cat or kitten that could live with you, ma'am, and not be fond of its own must be an idiot and don't deserve to live in it. Oh, Mr. Bumble! It's no use disguising facts, ma'am. An idiot! I would drown it myself with pleasure. Well, then you're a cruel man. A very hard-hearted man and all. Hard-hearted, Mrs. Corny. Hard. Hard-hearted. Are you hard-hearted, Mrs. Corny? Dear me, what a very curious question coming from a single man. What would you want to know for? Mr. Bumble, I shall scream! No, you wouldn't. I hope if I wanted something special, then you couldn't say no. Did I nearly catch you smiling? Yes.
Yes, I did, and it's beguiling. If your hand is close, I'll press it. Yes, you like it, come confess it. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. I shall scream. I shall scream. Till they hasten to my rescue, I shall scream. Since there's nobody that's near us who could see us or could hear us If I ask you can I kiss you, say what will my pretty miss do? I shall scream! 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 If I bid you one inch from your shy protective shell Could I unhitch you one inch? Will my blossom box some beauty? Let us soon to do his duty, though his love ain't very large, dear. Sit upon it, there's no charge, dear. Will you sit? No, I shan't. Will you sit? I shall scream. I shall scream. For the safety of my virtue, I shall scream. Though your knee is rather cozy, see my cheeks are getting rosy. You would have me in your power if I sat here for an hour. I shall scream, scream, scream. You're a naughty bad man. If you think I can't be proper, prim, and haughty, I can. And your pardon if I mention. You must state your true intention. Is there not another room here? No! If there were a bride and groom here, would there be? Well, there might. We shall see. I shall scream. I shall scream. Of the thought of what you're thinking, I shall scream. You will wonder where the scream went When we come to an agreement Though my lovely dove is chubby Could she love a chubby hobby? I just scream, Mr. Bumble I just scream, Bumble Wumble I just scream, scream, scream You would! Get a good price for him, Mr. Bumble. One boy for sale. He's going cheap for the seven guineas that are there. Dinners. Stop it getting stout. If I should say he wasn't very greedy, I could not, I'd be telling you a tale. One point, boy for sale. Take a peep. Have you ever seen as nice a boy for sale? Mr. Bumble, come in. Good day, Mr. Sourberry. Liberal terms, Mr. Sourberry. Liberal terms. Five pounds. Well, as a matter of fact, I was needing a good. Then it's settled. Five pounds. If you don't mind. Cash upon liking, Mr. Bumble. Cash.
cash upon liking. Mrs. Salaberry! What is it? My dear, will you have the goodness to come over here a moment? Oh, what do you want? Well, what is it? My dear, I have told Mr. Bumble here Hello, Mr. that Bumble. we may Hello, consider taking in this boy to help in the shop. Dear me, he's very small. Yes, he is rather small. There's no denying it. But you grow, Mrs. Sowerberry. You grow. Ah, I dare say he will on our vittles and our drink. They're a waste of time, these workhouse boys. They always cost more to keep than what they're worth. Still, you men always think you know best. What are you going to do with him? There's an expression of melancholy on his face, my dear, which is very interesting. He would make a delightful coffin follower. A what? I don't mean a regular coffin follower to follow grown-ups, but for the children's practice. It would be very nice to have a follower in proportion, my sweet. A superb effect! The more I think about it. Hmm. For once, Just for once, you might have a decent idea. Very well, then, boy. What's your name? Oliver. Oliver Twist, ma'am. A singular name. Why, ma'am? And one of my own choosing. Yours, Mr. Bumble. Mine, Mrs. Sowerberry. And how's that, Mr. Bumble? The boy's mother came to us destitute, brings the child into the world, takes one look at him, and promptly dies without leaving so much as a forwarding name or address. Dear, dear. Well, Oliver Twist, do you think you could look like that gentleman up there? Maybe, if I had a black hat. Never mind about the black The boy hats. is quite right. Get the boy a top yes, hat. Yes, dear. These things must be done proper and correct. Stand there. <laughs> Buy the picture, boy. And re-give us the top hat. Henry, really, it takes you twice as long to do anything as anyone else. <clears throat> yes, yes. For once, Henry, you've had a good idea. Can you keep that expression for a long time, boy? With the crowd watching you? Yes, ma'am, I think so. <laughs> Born undertaker's mute. I can see him in a black silk suit. Following behind the funeral procession with his features fixed in a suitable expression. There'll be horses with tall black plumes to escort us to the family pews with mourners in our corners who've been taught to weep in tune. Then the coffin light with satin that your funeral and your funeral large enough to wear your hat in that your funeral that your funeral we're just here to glamorize you for that endless sleep. You, you might just as well look fetching when you're six feet deep. At the wake, we'll drink a toddy to the body beautiful. That's your funeral. Not our funeral. That's your funeral. If you're fond of overeating, that's your funeral. That's your funeral. Starve yourself by under-eating, that's your funeral. That's my funeral. Visualize the earth descending on you, clad by clad. You can't come back once you're buried underneath a sahad. We will not reduce our prices, keep your vices usual. That's your funeral. Not our funeral. That's your funeral. song is funny. That's your funeral. That's your funeral. Is the boy now where's the money?
me. That's your funeral. That's your funeral. We don't harbor thoughts that covered. There's no need to frown. In the end, we'll either burn you up or nail you down. We love coughs and wheezes and diseases called incurable. That's your funeral. No one else's funeral. That's your That's your Have you eaten yet? No, ma'am, not since Charlotte, yesterday. Charlotte! Charlotte! What? Bring up some of the cold bits we put out for the dough. It hasn't been in all day, so it can go without them. I dare say. The boy isn't too dainty to eat them, are you, boy? Charlotte, love, this is the new boy. Give them to him. Have you done? Yes, ma'am. I'm pleased to hear it. Get to bed, Emery. Yes, dear. Come on, Charlotte, don't just stand there gawking. Now then, Oliver Twist, you sleep in this room. You don't mind sleeping among coffins, I suppose. But then, it doesn't much matter whether you do or don't. You can't sleep nowhere else. Where is love? Does it fall from skies above? Is it underneath the willow tree that I've been dreaming of? Must I travel far and wide Till I am beside the someone who I can mean something to Must I travel far and wide Till I am beside the someone who I can mean something to wear Wake up! 
Wake up, will you? Get your body up. Are you the new boy? Yes, sir. Get over here. Come on, come on. How old are you? Thirteen, sir. Then I'll whop you if you don't move faster. You just see if I don't, you little workhouse brat. Did you want a coffin, sir? No! But you'll be wanting one before long if you start cheating your superiors. You don't know who I am, I suppose, workers. No, sir. Can't say as I do. I'm Mr. Noah Claypole. And you're under me. So get out of my way, you idle young scallywag. Hello, Noah. I saved a nice bit of bacon for you from Master's breakfast. Oliver, take these bits and sit there and eat them. And Mike heist, because I'm going to want you to mind the shop, do you hear? Do you hear? Work us. Lord, no, what a tease you are. Let the boy alone. Let him alone? I'm giving the boy a change, you silly thing. Everyone lets him alone. His father left him alone. His mother left him alone. They all left him alone, except dear old kind old Noah. Hey, Charlotte? <laughs> you are old. Workers, how's your mother? You leave my mother out of this. She's dead. Oh, what did she die of, workers? Shortage of breath? Never you mind. Oh, but I do mind. Well, you better not say any more, see? Better not, better not, if you don't mind. The cheek of it, the workers' cheek of it. My mother, he says, she was a nice and she was. You know, workers, it can't be up now. And of course, it couldn't be up then. And on fairy I fought and all that. But you must know, workers, your mother was a regular right down bad un. What did you say? A regular right down bad un. And it's a good thing she died when she did, or she'd have been doing our labor in prison as like as not. Boom! Oh! Help! Charlotte! Mrs. This is new boys are murdering of me! Help! Help! Charlotte, it's a piece! Hot so 
sausage and mustard. Wild weather man. Cold jelly and custard. Peas, pudding and saveloys. What do you stand at? Ain't you never seen a gent? No, I haven't. Tired? I've been running hard. Oh, I say. You must be running away from the bay. The what? Now, don't tell me you don't know what a bay gives me, flesh mate. Isn't the beak what a bird's got? Me eyes, how green! Bake is a magistrate for your information. Hungry? Starving. Got no mother? No. A father? No. Lovely for me, what are we having today? Don't you think? Uh, staying in London? Yes. Got any lodgings? No. Money? Not a farthing. You've got to pick a pocket or two. You've got to... Do you live in London? Well, I'm around. I suppose you want some place to sleep tonight, don't you? Are you accommodated? No, I didn't think so. Then accommodated you shall be, you mate. There's a certain house and all I know respectable old gentleman lives there who will give you lodgings for nothing and never ask for the change. That is, that is if any other gentleman what he knows introduces you. And does he know me? Or I should say he does, not often he don't answer. Who is this respectable old gentleman then? Is he a charity gentleman? <laughs> well, I wouldn't exactly say that. Not exactly. But if all introduces you, it's all right. And I can't avoid having to be a particular favourite of Mr. Fagin. That's his name, Mr. Fagin. By the way, if I'm introducing you to Fagin, I better know who you are, me old China plate. My name's Oliver, Oliver Twist. And my name's Jack Dawkins. Better known among my more intimate friends as the Artful Dodger. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Dawkins. Come to think of it, I ain't got no intimate friends. Still, what's the difference, me old pork sausage? You're coming with me. Are you sure Mr. Fagin won't mind? Mind? Consider yourself at home. Consider yourself one of the family. Away taking the lead. So strong. It's clear we're going to get the long. Consider yourself well in. Consider yourself part of the furniture. There isn't a lot to spare. Who cares what? Whatever we've got, we share. If it's a chance to play, we should see some harder days. And if you want to die, why browse? Always a chance to meet somebody to put the bill. And then the drinks are on the out. Consider yourself our thanks. We do it to have no fuss. For after some consideration, we can stay. Consider yourself one of us. Consider yourself at home. Consider yourself one of the family. We've taken it in. So strong. It's clear we're going.
gone to death but all consider yourself well in consider yourself part of the furniture there isn't a lot to spare who cares what ever we've got to share choice be long gone not the same that's for the two Wise to be and rich to those who do. When the landlord comes to call, consider yourself our oh, might. We do it to have no fuss. For after some consideration, we can say, Consider yourself what of us.
Handkerchiefs, Amy dear. There are quite a few of them, ain't there? We've just hung them out ready for the wash. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's all. That's all. Is this a laundry then? <laughs> I suppose a laundry would be a very nice thing indeed. <laughs> but our line of business pays a little better, don't it, boys? No. <laughs> you see, Oliver. <laughs> In this life, one thing counts. In the bank, large amounts. I'm afraid things don't grow on trees. You've got to pick a pocket or two. You've got to pick a pocket or two. Boys, you've got to pick a pocket or two. Large amounts don't grow on trees. Why should we break our backs stupidly? Paying tax, better get some untaxed income. Better pick a pocket or two. You've got to pick a pocket or two. Boys, you've got to pick a pocket or two. Why should we all break our backs? Robin Hood, what a crook, gave away what he took. Charity swine, subscribe to mine, get out and pick a pocket or two. You've got to pick a pocket or two. Boys, you've got to pick a pocket or two. Robin Hood was far too good. Got to pick a pocket or two. Take a tip from Bill Sykes. He can whip what he likes. I recall he started small. He had to pick a pocket or two. You've got to pick a pocket or two. Boys, you. Got to pick a pocket or two. We can be like old Bill Sykes if we pick a pocket or two. Dear old gent, passing boy, something nice takes his eye. Everything's clear, but hats are real. Advance and pick a pocket or two. Got to pick a pocket or two. Boys, you've got to pick a pocket or two. Have no fear, attack the rear. Advance and pick a pocket or two. Now this is a new one. When I see someone rich, both my thugs start to itch. Only to find some peace of mind, I have to pick a pocket or two. You've got to pick a pocket or two. Boys, you've got to pick a pocket or two. Come here. 
watch off the road. I hope you've all been hard at work today, me dears. Hard as rocks. Good boys, good boys, good boys. And what have you got there, Dodger? A couple of wallets. Not as heavy as they might be, but very nicely made. I ingenious workman, ain't he, Oliver? Very ingenious, sir. <laughs> what have you got, me dear? No, it's right. <laughs> well, they're very good ones, Charlie. Yellow and green. <laughs> you haven't embroidered them too well now. So we'll have to pick the initials out with the needle. You'll have to learn how to do this, Oliver. Won't you, boys? <laughs> but in the meantime, you'll have to learn how to make wallets. Like Dodger and Charlie here. You'd like that, wouldn't you, Oliver? Oh, yes, Mr. Fagan. If you'll teach me. Certainly, my boy, certainly. No fee. Just do everything that the Dodger and Charlie do. Make them your models, me dear. Especially Dodger here. He's gonna be a regular little Bill Sykes, he is. Now then, Oliver, is my handkerchief protruding from my pocket? Yes, sir. I can just see the corner. See if you can take it out without me feeling it, like you saw the others do. <laughs> Rum tum 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 What a clever boy! Oh, yeah. oh, I never saw a sharper lad. Here's a sixpence for you, Oliver. Sixpence? Oh, oh, I've got no money. I've got to go to the bank. Oh. But if you go on this way, Oliver, you'll be the greatest man of all time. Oh. Yes, you're quite a gentleman now. You've got a sixpence on credit. You've got a home and a profession. Hey, boys? Oh. <laughs> Now bedtime! Oh. Oh. All of ya! Oh. You can sleep down here, Oliver. <laughs> Get out. Dodger, take your hat off in bed. Have a nightcap, Oliver. I'm afraid the wedge was in the safe. <laughs> You got to pick a pocket or two, boys. You got to pick a pocket or two. just like to look at it. That's all. This is my little pleasure. A cup of coffee. And a quick count up. Oh. 
I mean, who's going to look after me in my old age? Will you? Will you? Will you? Will you? You! Why are you awake? What have you seen? Quick, quick, speak! I want to hear every detail you saw! I couldn't sleep anymore, sir. I'm very sorry if I disturbed you, sir. Were you awake five minutes ago? No, sir. Two minutes ago? Not that I know of, sir. Be sure, be sure. All right, then, I'm sure. All right, then. If you're sure, I'm sure. <laughs> of course I knew all along, Oliver. Uh, I was only trying to frighten you. You're a brave boy, Oliver, a brave boy. Did you see any of the pretty things in the box, me here? Yes, sir. They're mine, Oliver, mine. <coughs> My little property. All I've got to live on in me old age. It's a terrible thing, old age. Do you think I can get up now, sir? Certainly, certainly, Oliver. Uh, there's a basin of water over here. You can have a wash. But I had a wash yesterday, sir. Well, today's your birthday, wash. Plummy and slam! Wake up, boys, come on! The ladies are here, wake up! All in moderation, me dear. Too much gin can be a dangerous thing for a pure young girl. <laughs> and what's wrong with a drop of danger then, Mr. Fagin? After all, it's the only bit of excitement we have around here. And who would deny us that small pleasure? Would you? Small pleasure, small pleasure. Deny us these gin toddies, large measures, no skipping if you please. I rough it, I love it. Life is a game of chance. I'll never tire of it, leading this merry dance. If you don't mind having to go without things, it's a fine life. It's a fine life. and strive. Let the prudes look down and set the wide world front and it's, it's a fine, fine life. Who cares if strife likes this sneer at us in the street? A fine, yes, and fine crisis don't have to sin to eat. We wander through London, who knows what we may find? There's pockets left undone on many a behind. If you don't mind taking it like it turns out, it's a fine life. It's a fine life. Though we sometimes take it and it turns out, it's a fine life. It's a fine life. Even though you sometimes do come by the occasional black always come one while he blacks the other one, but you don't dare cry. Go ahead, go give the try. No flounces, no feathers, no fruits for below. All winds and all weathers, anchors, fancy clothes. These trappings, these tatters, these we can just afford. One future, one we got a bed and board. If you don't mind, have to deal with saying <laughs> it's a fine life. It's a fine life. So duck these rats, the rats that bring the plague in. It's a fine life. It's a fine life. Though the grass is green and dense on the right side of the fence, and we take good care of it. That we 
right then, lads. Can't have you lowering about your old day. There's work to be done, and there's a fine pickings out there on the street. Get out and earn your king. Ta ta, you lot. Ta ta. ta, -ta. ta, -ta. Dodger, take Oliver with you. You have to make a start somewhere, Oliver, and believe me, you couldn't have made a finer start. Good luck on your first job, me dear, and I'll be waiting for you when you get back. You can go, but be back soon. You can go, but we're working. This place is amazing now. I tell you how. Same as that. Very well, but be back soon. Who can tell when this is working? Do not forget this too. Be back soon. How could we let our two feet and our two old bacon worthy? We love him, so we'll come back home in all such great big hurry. Of pop behind good cheese, and you should be clever thief. We'll be quick and be back soon. There's a sixpence here for twenty. Ain't that on a blink too? Be back soon. A pocket's a hole and watch of gold that chimes upon the hour. A wallet that an old man's head. The crowd jewels from the tower. We know the ballast runners, but they are no Somehow I'll miss ya. I love ya, that's why I say cheerio, not goodbye. Don't be gone, but be back soon. Give me one long last look, bless ya. Remember a tune. Be back soon. We must disappear. We'll be back in two days, perhaps tomorrow. We'll miss you too. It's sad, but you left heart in such great sorrow. And when we're in the ditches, you'll hear this place come to. And he 
nobody could see. Secretly he'd buy it and drink it on the quiet and dream he was an earl with a girl on each knee. What is 
become of him? What have become of Oliver? Got to go away in the coach. Who coach? What coach? Where coach? He got nobbed on the job. They took him to court. And we waited inside. The old man they robbed. Come out of the court with Oliver. And took him in a coach to his own. Where to? Quick, speak! Bloomsbury. 19 Chipstone Gordon's Bloomsbury. I ran all the way. Why didn't you look after him? Why didn't you bring him back with ya? Fake, he looks worried. One of us, Bill. A new boy. Went on in his first job today with Dodger. And I'm afraid he may say something which will get us into trouble. That's very likely. You blowed up on Fagin. <laughs> I'm afraid, you see, that if the game was up with us, it might be up with a good many more. It would come out rather worse for you than it would for me, my dear. Somebody must find out what's been done or said. If he hasn't caught yet, there's still a chance we might get him back without suspicion. We'll nab him the very moment he steps foot out of that house. Now, who's gonna go? Nancy, the very thing. What do you say? No, the very thing. That it won't do, Fagin, so it's no use of trying it on. And just what do you mean by that remark? What I say, Bill. Why, you're the very person for it. Nobody up that way knows anything about you. And as I don't want you to either, it's rather more no than yes with me, Bill. She'll go, Fagin. No, she won't, Fagin. Yes, she will, Fagin. Uh. Go on, get out! Go home, then. Go home. What you see, I'm sure that he needs me. Who else would love him still when they've been used so ill? He knows I
I think you'll find a great improvement in the boy. That, sir, is for me to decide. Mrs. Bedwin, would you kindly take the doctor's wraps, please? How do you feel today, my boy? Much better, thank you. May I stay here always, sir? If you wish, dear boy, if you wish. Here's the doctor to see you. You are feeling a great deal better today, are you not? Yes, thank you, sir. Yes, I know you are. You're hungry too, aren't you? No, sir. No, you are not hungry. He is not hungry, Mrs. Bedwin. No, doctor. You feel sleepy, don't you? No, sir. No, you're not sleepy. Not thirsty, are you? If that boy's thirsty, I'll eat my head. Are you? Yes, sir. Rather thirsty. Aha! Just as I expected. It's very natural he should be thirsty. You may give him a little tea. May I get up, sir? I think you may. And take a little fresh air. <coughs> don't keep too warm, Mrs. Bedwin. But be sure, don't let it be too cold. Will you have the goodness? Certainly, Doctor. You'll be glad to be up again, Oliver. Doctor, do you notice the most extraordinary likeness between that boy's face and the portrait of my daughter, Agnes? Can't say I do. I only know two sorts of boys. Mealy face boys and beef face boys. And which is Oliver? Mealy face. Where does he come from? Didn't I tell you? He was arrested for stealing my pocket handkerchief. What, sir? It was all my mistake. And when the shopkeeper told us what happened and he was released by the magistrate, well, I brought him here to make what amends I could. But I must admit, I find myself strangely attached to the child. He's deceiving you, my good friend. He has had a fever. What of that? Fevers are not peculiar to good people, are they? Bad people have fevers sometimes. Haven't they? He stole your pocket handkerchief, didn't he? Then he'll steal more, sir. He didn't steal. Excuse me, sir. Yes, what is it? Books you ordered from the bookseller, sir. Ah, uh, yes, thank you. Now I have some other books. Hey, wait a moment. Come back! Oh dear, he's gone, and I particularly wish some books to be returned today. Send Oliver with them. He'll be sure to deliver them safe to you now. If he does, I'll eat my head. Yes, do let me take them for you. Please, sir. Oh. And... Oh, very well, my boy, very well. If you wish, you shall. Now, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to take these books and tell him you've come to pay the four pounds ten that Mr. Brownlow owes. Here's five pounds. Now, there's no need to rush. It's just down the road, but I shall expect you back in ten minutes. Very good, sir. Let us see, Mrs. Bedwin. Ten minutes. <laughs>
alone. Oh, thank goodness gracious heavens, I found him. What's the matter, love? Oh, he ran away two weeks ago from his parents, who are hard-working, respectable people, and went away and joined a gang of thieves and bad characters. Almost broke his mother's heart. Make him come home. Yeah, rat! Go home, you little brute. I won't. She's not my sister. Got no sister, got no mother, no father neither. Just listen to him. Beck, tell him to let me go. See, he knows his little sister. He can't hide that. Make him come home, or he'll kill his mother and father. What the devil's this? Young Oliver? Come home to your poor mother, you young dog. Come on home. What books are these? They're Mr. Brownlow's. You've been stealing again, have you? He's nothing but a thief and a vagabond. Come on, you little thief. Twist, I'll give him a twist. All right, my Bill. We're here. Why don't you let him be? Look, boys. Oliver's back. <laughs> He's got books bagging. <laughs> and look at his dogs bagging. Super foin cloth and the heavy swell cuts. Nothing but a gentleman bagging. Delighted to see you looking so well, me dear. The artful Dodger shall give you a new suit for fear you should spoil that Sunday one. <laughs> Why didn't you write, my dear, and say you were coming? We'd have gotten something warm for supper. <laughs> Hello. That's mine, Fagin. No, no, Bill. Mine, Bill, mine. You can have the books. <laughs> <laughs> if that ain't mine, mine and Nancy's, that is, I'll take the boy back again. Come on. And over. This is hardly fair, Bill. Fair or not fair. And over, I tell you. Hardly fair, is it, Nancy? Do you think Nancy and me has got nothing better to do with our time but to spend it chasing after young kids? Give it here, you avaricious old skeleton. <coughs> Give it here. Thanks for our share of the trouble. And not half enough either. Here, start a library. You can't keep those books. They belong to Mr. Brownlow. And if he finds out you've got him, he'll be out here after you. So, he'll be out here, Millie. Just what did you tell him about us? Nothing. That remains to be seen. But if we found you said anything, anything out of place, Fagin, I'll wager this young scoundrel stole him everything. I don't care for that, Bill. The child shan't be harmed unless you kill me first. Shanty, I'll soon do that if you don't keep off. All right, all right, we've got him. What's the matter? That girl's gone mad, I think. No, she hasn't, Fagin. Don't think it. Well, then keep quiet, will ya? I won't keep quiet. All this violence. Try it right away, would you? I won't stand by and see it done, Bill. You've got him here. What more would you have? Let him be. Let him be. Or I'll put my mark on some of you and not care for the consequences. Why, Nancy, you're so wonderful today. Such talent. Uh, what an actress. Am I? Well, take care I don't overdo it. Because I'm warning you. I'll put my finger on some of you. And I don't care if I hang with you. You? Do you know who you are and what you are? Oh, yes, I know all about it, who I am and what I am. Well, then keep quiet, or I'll quiet you for a good long time to come. You're a nice one coming on with all this humane and genteel rubbish. A pretty subject for the child is you might call him to make a friend of. Lord, help me, I am. And I wish I'd been struck dead in the street before I lent a hand in bringing him here. After today, he's a thief 
and a liar and everything that's bad from this day forth. Isn't that enough for you without, without beating him to death? Come, come, Sykes. We must have civil words. Civil words, Bill. Civil words. Yes, you deserve them for me. I thieved you when I was a child, half his age, and for 12 years since. Don't you forget it. Well, if you have, it's your living. Some living, some living. What you deserve, you get. No getting or getting. What's we have murders yet? There'll be murders, there'll be terror, such as you never see. No violence, watch it, there's no violence, there's no terror. If you don't mind making a mate of Satan, it's a my life. My life. My life, Satan? No, we don't mind keeping the angels waiting. It's a fine life. Fine life. Fine life. Come back to do as you are told. Watch out. Bill has got a heart of gold. Get out. Better not to mess with it. Better not to mess with it. It's a fine Dodger, you look after him, and I'll look after myself. I think I better think it out again. A wife you can keep anyway. I'd rather sleep anyway. Left without anyone in the world, and I'm starting from now. So, how to infringe and to influence people? So, how? I'm reviewing the situation. I must quickly look up everyone I know. Titled people with a station. God help me make a real impressive show. I will own a suite of carriages and run a fleet of carriages and wave at all the duchesses with friendliness as much as it's befitting of my new estate. Good morning to you. That is great. I think I better think it out again. So where shall I go, somebody? Who do I know? Nobody. 
Oh, my dearest companions have always been villains and thieves. So at my time of life, I should start turning over new leaves. I'm reviewing the situation. If you want to eat, you've got to earn a farm. Is it such a humiliation? For a robber to perform an honest job So a job I'm getting possibly I wonder how the boss will be I wonder how he'll take to me What bonuses he'll make to me I'll start that day and finish late At normal rate and oh but wait I think I better think it out again What happens when I'm 70? Must come a time. 70? When you're old and it's cold and who cares if you live why you die? Your one consolation's the money you may have put by. I reviewing the situation. I'm a bad un and a bad and I shall stay. You be see, no transformation. But it's wrong to be a rogue in every way. I don't want nobody hurt on me or me to do the dirt for me. This rotten life is not for me. It's getting far too hard for me. Don't want no one to rob for me. But who will find a job for me? There is no in-between for me But who will change the scene for me? I think I better think it out again! Wait! Married. And two weeks ago tomorrow it was done. It seems an age. I sold myself for six teaspoons, a pair of sugar tongs, a silver milk pot, a small quantity of second hand furniture and 20 pounds cash. I went very reasonable. Cheap. Dirt cheap. Cheap? You would have been dead any price, and dead enough I'd pay for you. Oh, the bug knows that. <clears throat> Are you going to sit there snoring all day? I shall sit here as long as I think proper, madam. And although I was not snoring, I shall snore, gape, sneeze, laugh or cry as the humour strikes me, such being my prerogative. Your prerogative! I said the word, madam. The prerogative of a man is to command. And what's the prerogative of a woman in the name of goodness? To obey, madam. Your late unfortunate husband should have taught it to you long ago. And then perhaps he might have been alive today. And I wish he was, poor man. You are not a brute! Cry <laughs> away, madam. It opens the lungs, exercises the eyes, softens the temper, and washes the face. So cry away. How dare you speak to me like that, you great big lump! <coughs> now speak to me about your prerogative if you dare! Oh, Shut up! Take yourself away from here! Unless you want me to do something desperate. Well, are you going? Certainly, my dear. Certainly. I had no intention of staying. It's just that you're so very violent. Who's <coughs> 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 It's me, 
Matron, tell her to come here. <coughs> Matron, please come here. <coughs> it's old Sally, ma'am. She says she got something to tell you that must be heard. <coughs> She'll never die quiet till you hear. Turn her away. Go on, get out of it. But I'm your old friend Annie. Go on, get out of it. <coughs> now, <coughs> listen to me. Once in this very town, in this <coughs> very spot, I nursed a pretty young critter that was brought into the house with a feet cut and bruised with walking. <coughs> she gave birth to a boy and died. <coughs> what about her? I robbed her. I, I robbed her, so I did. All she had <coughs> were round the neck, and it would go. Gold? Yes, go on. This is it. <coughs> lock it, lock it. She whispered in me that if a babe should live, the day would come when it might feel proud to hear its poor <coughs> mother named. It's my belief she came from a good, rich family. The boy's name? They called him. Yes! Oliver! We must recruit that boy, Mr. Bubble. We must indeed, madam. We must indeed. Oliver! Oliver! That was the mite with the large appetite. Oliver! 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 From a rich family. And to the Queen, Lee, stupidly wet and lost track of him. In the truth, were known, we both be happy at seeing the back of him. Oliver! Oliver, what will we do? We must give him his due. And we'll, we'll praise the day somebody gave us all. Mr. Brown, now down. May I help you? I've come about the boy. All of that twist. Come in, come in. I knew we should hear of the poor dear. I knew it all along. I understand you bring information regarding the boy. All of a twist. I have come in to answer your advertisement. Bumble is my name, sir. Beetle of the workhouse where this boy was cared for. From where he was apprenticed to an undertaker. Uh, where he ran away from. Yes, yes. And do you know where the boy is now? Not no more than no body. Then what do you know of him? This little trinket was given to my dear wife by the lad's dying mother just before she passed away. The lad's mother, that is. Not my wife. Mrs. Bumble has kept it all this time. You say that when he left your workhouse, he went to an undertaker's? Yes, Mr. Sowerberry, the undertaker, took Oliver away from us for five pounds. You mean to say you sold him like an animal? Well, it was Mrs. Bumble who actually authorized the sale. Really? Then I shall see to it that neither of you is employed in a situation of trust again. You may leave my house! I hope that this unfortunate little circumstance will not deprive me of my parochial office. Indeed it will! And you may think yourself well off besides. It was all Mrs. Bumble! She would do it! That is no excuse! You were present on the occasion when a boy was sold, and indeed are the more guilty of the two in the eye of the law. For the law supposes that your wife acts under your direction. If the law supposes that, then the law's an ass. If that's the eye of the law, then the law's a bachelor. And the worst I wish the law is that his eye may be open by experience. By experience! There is a young person at the back door, sir inquiring for you and saying that she has come about Oliver. Mrs. Bedwin, take a look at this miniature. 
You see who it is? Why, it's Miss Agnes, sir. Yes, my daughter Agnes. And I have every reason to suspect that Oliver was her child. Sir, do you really... I can't stay out there any longer. If I'd gone away as many would have done, why, you might have been sorry, not without reason neither. I'm uh, sorry if anyone has been rude to you. Can I help you in any way? I don't know. Can she be trusted? Yes, why? I am the girl that took little Oliver back to Fagin by the morning he left this house. You? Me, sir. And I wish now that I'd never been part of it. The boy, he mentioned you specially, and I thought if I came to you... Well, where, where is this place you speak of? Fagin's? I can't tell you. Did you perhaps know that Oliver is probably my grandchild? I didn't know nothing. All I knew was me orders. I had to get him back or suffer for it. You don't believe me? I don't want your pity. I had to come. Even though there are those who would murder me if they knew I'd been here. Murder? But where is Oliver? Where is this Fagin's? I can't tell you. I just wanted you to know that Oliver is safe. I gotta go back now, quickly. But, but what can I do about all this? Why must you go back? What is the reason you can't tell me where he is? And why must you return to those people? Uh, I can call the boats to run no, in a moment. No, no. And you tell them you what you just to... told me, they will see you come to no harm. Don't you understand? I want to go back. I must go back. Oh, how can I explain? You see, back there, there's a man that I just can't leave. You see, I love him. I don't know what it is like to love someone like that. I understand, dear. My dear ladies, do excuse me, but I am anxious about Oliver. How can you help me? I won't tell you where he is, but I'll bring him to you. Not here, that's, that's too dangerous. Will you promise that I won't be watched or followed? I promise you solemnly. Then tonight, between 11 and the time the clock strikes 12, I will walk on the London Bridge and I will bring Oliver. doesn't act as though he cares, but deep inside I know he cares, and that is why I'm tied right by his side. As long Someone else needs me as long as life is long. I'll love him, right or wrong, but he's so big and strong, and someone else. Child with no one to take his part. 
Well, it's a dark night, my love. But it's lighting up what I got to do. I wasn't going to blow the gas. Honestly, I wasn't. Bill, you've got to believe me, Bill. Bill, I wouldn't say nothing. Bill. Tell me what happened, sir. Well, I came here to meet this poor creature, and as I crossed the bridge, I saw someone rapidly disappearing in the other direction. Now, what was he wearing? He wore a green coat and a black hat. It's Bill Sykes! It's Nancy! He's murdered Nancy! Bacon! Bacon! I'm coming in, Bacon! I'm coming!
before I all go home tonight, we, we have a few people we'd like to acknowledge, um, without whom this play could not have been put on. First of all, everyone that was involved in any type of prop committee, costume committee, all kinds of stage committees. <laughs> Our costumes were organized by Sister Marianne and Sister Marie. Our technical director in charge of all lighting, Bob Gulick. Both of our spots. Right. Yeah. And our student choreographer, Anne Marie Irwin, where I was. <laughs> also, the one, the only, Freddie Biaggi, curtain puller. Yeah. Under the direction of Mr. Cook, and after all, <laughs> and after all, what would a musical be without music? <laughs> also, a very special person responsible for everything you see on the stage, with the exception of the bodies and the costumes, Miss Mr. Racy. Please come up. For you now is the man in charge of all of the makeup and our assistant director, Mr. Joe Langer. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, the one person who, without her help, absolutely none of this would have been possible. Our director, Mrs. Mrs. Simpson. Yeah. not relating to the play. If anyone finds a pair of Ford car keys, please give them to Mr. Ramacone in the lobby. Thank you once again. <laughs> Thank you. 